So, so we are very, very much well into the application season. I know the kids already started applying. So um, last week um, in North Carolina, for example, was a free application week. Although it, as it turned out, uh, it's free only for a very few schools. So most schools were still charging, but still it was a good stimulus to apply early. Um, I know some kids started applying also for the early admission, uh, for the early um, action and early decision colleges. So uh, lots of questions about um, uh, essays, about um, other technical issues. Uh, so today uh, I did receive a few emails by email, I mean, a few questions by email that I will ask also at some point. But also um, just a reminder that um, there is really no more time. So we need to, uh, if you have not started applying yet, now is the time. You still have a little time until the regular deadline, but now the season is open. So we have passed the general exploration stage and now we are in the application stage. And it does take a lot of time. So I've been trying to help Maxim a little bit with his applications last week. And so uh, it does take a few hours per university, even though you have the common app set up and everything, but there will be additional little questions here and there. And it does take time to attach all documents, to upload answers to all of the questions, to decide on all the details, such as you know your major, your first choice, your second choice. Uh, you probably want to say a few words about the school specifically, like when they ask you, you know, why our school, for example. You probably want to do some research on the website look at the mission and vision and maybe some faculty research uh, websites, uh, I mean, web pages. And so that does take a lot of time. And uh, so whatever time you budget, uh, multiply that by two because it will take longer than you expect. So, but um, I'll turn the microphone to our professors here. Uh, so, um, um, and let's, let's, let's talk some more. Uh, my understanding is that today we were planning to talk a little bit more about the application essay or Yes, yeah. I think that's what we are focusing yeah. on. So good morning, that's a everyone. Very, very important topic, yes. Good morning, Ray. Uh, everyone. I know we still have more students coming up here. <laughs> um, but uh, this week, we were actually looking at some of your Common App as essays. And I think it was, um, it was a pleasure looking at them because uh, some of you were like, on the point, on the spot. Um, and one thing which I'd like to really emphasize here is that uh, when the program officers or the admission officers, when they will read your essay, they want to look at your viewpoint. So try to make it as less bookish as possible. Like don't take it from a book, but make sure that it's coming from your own thing, from your own heart, right? Uh, something that's appealing to you, something that's very important to you. Um, let me just give you an example here. So, and I know it's a very, uh, you know, when the student came to me last year and she was actually working on her common app as essay, uh, she was like, you know, it was it started with a very small problem that she had, but for in her mind, it was a very big problem. The problem that she had, and believe it or not, was about her hair. So her hair was very curly um, and, uh, you know, uh, she was like struggling or she struggled with her hair for throughout her life because obviously, you know, uh, curly hair, I mean, uh, you know, when you have something, you don't really appreciate it as much. In her case, she wanted to have straight hair. So it was like, you know, she, uh, she used all methods, all, all tools, all techniques uh, to straighten her hair as much as possible. Uh, but everything failed. And uh, now without revealing the ethnic uh, identity of the student, I'm just trying to tell you, so this was a big problem for her. Now, obviously, if you tell someone that my hair is my problem, uh, others will not understand, right? Uh, they don't know what you have been going through or whatever. So this became a part of her common app essay. So when she wrote the essay, she talked about her hair and she said that she has struggled with her hair right from the childhood. Uh, you know, it's very messy, it's very curly. Uh, she tried all the straightening tools. She tried all methods possible to make her hair straight. Uh, and uh, one day uh, she had this fine, uh, you know, that calling or the fine uh, uh, thing, you know, like a revelation on her that she needs to accept what she has. So she has to accept the hair the way she is. And she has to make sure that she looks pretty. She looks presentable in the hair that's given to her, you know, naturally. So uh, that became the part or the essence of her big essay that she wrote. And then she actually tried to use the, her hair as a metaphor uh, for struggles, for all the struggles that she had in her life. So whether it's, uh, you know, the being bullied at school or because of her hair, or it could be, uh, you know, uh, being bullied at a presentation or in the office or wherever she went for an internship. She wrote all the instances in her life 
and then related it back to her hair, the problem that she was dealing with right throughout her childhood. And then finally, she said that, you know, when she had this uh, thing that obviously now I have to I have to face my struggles in life, I have to fa uh, face them as challenges and make them work as opportunities. And then, one, uh, you know, in her last closing sentence or the class closing paragraph, uh, she wrote that she accepted herself and now she's very happy with what she has, whether it's her hair or the problems, because they have really helped her uh, move forward in life. So that essay, I mean, um, you know, it's not a great topic, right? If you really think about it, you're talking about your looks or your hair, that's not a big thing. But since the students struggle with that, and she is using it as a metaphor for her own struggles, and then she's relating it uh, to the instances that she went through, whether it was a college or the high school or whatever, uh, and then finally emerging it as a winner, saying that now I have to accept the way it is, uh, and this is a part of me, it's a part of my life, okay? So that metaphor of her hair being messy and now she's accepting it uh, and then the same goes with the life and the struggles and everything, uh, that really appealed to the admissions officer. And the reason I say that is because she got into very great colleges. Right now, she, as we speak, she is uh, at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. Um, so again, my point here is it could be a very trivial issue. It could be a very small thing that you guys might be thinking, uh, you know, or if, but for you, it could be a big thing. So if there's anything that you have that's specific to you, that you think is a big deal, but people are, around you may not understand that, then maybe the basic thing or the basic ingredients that you should have in your essay is to tell about your struggles and then tell how you successfully overcame those struggles. And again, it doesn't have to be successful. It could be a failure. It's like something that you did something, you tried something in life and you failed, that's fine. The fact that you never gave up makes you a winner, right? So that's where, you know, the entire college, um, uh, you know, essay looks like. There has to be a story that you have to make, whether the story is about your hair as a problem or it is about being bullied at school as a problem and then taking it as a challenge and facing it every day and then making sure uh, that, you know, because of your academics, people respect you then obviously all of those things become a part of your essay. So one very important thing that really helps uh, in your essay is your cultural background as well. So talk about your ethnicity, talk about your background, talk about the country that you come from, the number of languages that you're exposed to. Uh, the more global you look like in your presentation in your essay, uh, the better the essay is. Because remember, people on the other side, they know you only through your essay. There's nothing else that they know about you Obviously, they know your scores. Uh, they know that some of the scores are good, some of the scores are bad. Again, there's a story behind those scores as well, right? So let's say you worked or you have like 4.0 GPA. Um, like, you know, so in the schools, you were performing like really on the top of the class, but suddenly in your SAT or ACT, your scores are not that high. If there's a reasoning behind that, and if you could make it a part of your essay, go ahead and do it. Because remember, please remember those essays are the key. They are reading those essays like full pages. And the reason again that I know that is because we have a dedicated team of admissions officers out there. They're like, uh, not, you're not talking about 10 of them. They're sometimes 20 or 30. So because they're looking at your applications and thousands of applications flowing to them. So they give time to each application, reading your essay and making sure that they understand the person and the personality that you are. Uh, so, I mean, I just want to start that with those points because I wanted to make sure that your words, your passion, your experiences in life, your things count. Nothing else counts. You know, we all know the laws of science or we know the laws of thermodynamics. So don't try to explain uh, any bookish knowledge. Don't try to give us any laws or any facts that we already know. Try to give us what has gone in your life, what incidents have happened uh, to you that make you the person that you are today. That's what they're interested in when they read your essay. And the essays are the critical part of your entire thing. So remember, even when you look at the college and you look at the SAT scores, they're very, like there is, there is a, a range of the scores that they accept, right? So it's not that they accept 1500s. No one says that we need a perfect score. So they're looking at somewhere from 1350 or 1370 to whatever number, uh, 1600 or whatever. I mean, whatever is the range is what they're looking at. So the reason they're looking at the range is because they know that even though you may not have a high SAT score, but if your essay is good, if they like the person that you are that comes through your essay, then obviously, you know, it's worth it.
then they will definitely uh, give a second look or a third look to your application. Uh, and that's that's what counts. So they will make sure that the application is read by, if, let's say if I'm the admissions officer, if I see that this student or this candidate uh, doesn't have high score in one thing, but her essay or his essay is excellent. I mean, I am really involved in the essay. You know, it's so great that I feel that I'm a part of the essay myself. But in that case, you really have a second chance. And that's what we want. At this stage, when you're applying for early decision, early applications, all of those things, you really need the application committee to not reject it right away. You want them to give you a second chance. And the second chance is saying that we defer your application or whether they say that we accept you, that's what we want. So that early applications are very important because uh, that's your first take on the particular, on the applications committee, on the programs or the admissions committee, right? So I won't take much of your time now. I know I'm gonna give it to Dr. Amit Arora at this moment, and then he'll take over and he'll show us uh, uh, our son's essay that he wrote for getting into Georgetown University. So over to you, Amit. Um, just one one question. So, um, can I ask you about the essay? Because, um, to be honest, I'm I'm still sort of I see multiple purposes for the essay, and I'm trying to get a better understanding of what exactly the students are trying to communicate through it. So I can see how this could be both not both. It's like you know four different reasons. One, uh, a test of your writing skills, and in this case, uh, it doesn't matter what the topic is as long as it's well written, both uh, sort of linguistically, but also uh, sort of, you know, proper structure and, you know, so that's one. Second, it could be also a fit for the university, but there is a separate survey normally that asks you why this particular school. But again, perhaps uh, that's where students can communicate why do they think that they need a degree in general. Third, as you said, maybe something that you communicate about the personality, so like hair. So it has nothing to do with, um, uh, you know, in college per se, but more about me as a person, what it is. Fourth, in my opinion, uh, I'm also a little struggling because I can see this as some sort of a, how should I put it in politically correct terms? Like sometimes I have a feeling that it's somewhat a, um, uh, let's call it just a game. I wanted to give it a, you know, a, a bad word, but it almost seems like it's a game because, you know, if you take enough stuff, so it's almost like a game who can come up with a more, pompous, let's call it that way, story. So I can imagine that some kids may be even higher professional writers. Others probably uh, solicit help of, I don't know, parents, teachers, and so on and so on. And so in the end, I wonder what portion of that survey, of that, uh, of that essay uh, is actually the kid himself, herself. Uh, could it be simply you know, the ability to sort of to, to play the game right. And so I'm, I'm just trying to kind of look at it and I'm still a little confused. So which of those matters, what is the message that the students are trying to send? Uh, what exactly are the readers of the survey, uh, of, the, of the essay looking for? Are they looking just simply it's engaging and it's interesting or are they looking for some sort of a, uh, you know, um, interesting twist or plan or, or I don't know, so it seems like so much could be going on in those 650 words that to be honest, on the one hand, it's clear to me, on the other hand, it's completely confusing. And on the third hand, if I had a third hand, it's almost seems like it's a, you know, competition in something that is so remote from the actual student that uh, it almost becomes, I don't know, like unnecessary or, 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 you know, fake to some extent. I don't know. Like, what's your thought here? Yeah, uh, so I would like to chip in a little bit. Uh, so I agree with us, you know, it's a combination of your writing skills, the fit for the university, the personality, uh, the the oom the factor in your story. So all of this is there, but I think the most important thing that the admissions officer are looking for is your attitude, attitude towards learning. Attitude, yeah. yeah. So that attitude towards learning, and they want that attitude because they want all the applicants who they are going to admit in the next year, they want all of them to be successful, they want all of them to have good GPA scores, they uh, want all of them to get good jobs. So they are looking for the right candidates and the right candidates with the right attitude. So that's one thing that you have to really bring out in your essay that, yes, I'm here to learn, I'm eager to learn, and I'm hungry to learn. And this is what I've learned so far. And this is what I do in my 
uh, in my time in school to learn more and more. And this is what I'll be doing in the future to learn more. And more. Uh, they, uh, you know, all these universities, they are good universities. They are like maybe, you know, top class or maybe they are tier two. They are in some sort of a league. And they want their students to be successful because that's going to uh, bring a good name to their university and they'll have a strong alumni network, right? So that's what they're looking for. So that learning attitude thing, that should really come out in your, uh, uh, in, in your essay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's not just a story then. So it is a story that tells, essentially explains that you have the right attitude, attitude that it takes, you know, to succeed and you will be a successful student and maybe go on to other things after the graduation. Uh, and exactly. make the school proud. Yeah. Right. Uh, let me just uh, piggyback on what Amit just said here. So, as Dr. Charles was saying, a lot of people are even hiring uh, consultants, or you know, maybe going to the college uh, counselors and uh, spending money and making them write essays. But remember, these admission officers—they're uh, not—they're <laughs> not reading your essays for the first time. They are a team of very experienced people, and somehow, uh, you know, believe it or not, again they know that this is an essay that's written by an expert and this is an essay that's written by a student, right? So there's always a difference when it comes to a student writing versus an expert writing. And the difference is not in terms of, uh, of the linguistics or not in terms of basically uh, the grammar or something. Obviously, they expect the best grammar for you from you guys. They expect that you will take care of your errors. They expect that you'll do the copy edits, not just one time, but millions of times before you submit your essay for the college app or for the common app, right? The reason I know that they are doing their thorough job in terms of uh, reading your essays completely and then understanding who wrote the essays because they're not just looking at your essay, they're looking at the complete application. So when they say that's a holistic process, it actually is a holistic process for them. They read your resume, they have done your, um, I mean, uh, they reach out to you. Sometimes they even conduct your interviews. You know, I know in Armin's case, I think uh, he got about 10, 20 interviews that were conducted by different universities yeah. uh, just because they showed their interest in him, right? So the point I'm trying to make here is, okay, you can get expert help. Uh, but at the end of the day, if it's something that relates to you yeah. and your life uh, you know, experiences, that's what counts. I mean, that is something that will be appealing to them because remember, they're looking at all those essays and uh, if, if an essay is written by me as an expert, then I'm not talking about the problems that you have in your life. I will make it more like a, you know, academically written piece, maybe like a research paper or something, which is not what they're looking at. What they are looking at really is what you have done with your life. Okay, one other thing which I'd like to emphasize here, which again, I know the admissions officers like, is uh, if you have done any kind of academic research, so if you did anything in your 11th grade or 10th grade or even in your senior year, uh, which deals with some kind of research in a particular topic and that research got presented somewhere by you or it got published somewhere or you talked about it and then you're referring uh, it or referencing it in your, uh, in your essay, then that's what counts, right? Right, so they, I mean, they want to make sure that you are, um, you know, you're prepared for college. You're prepared for all the rigorous things that's gonna happen, let's say at MIT or Princeton or, or Columbia or UPenn, right? So they want to make sure that you are ready to take on the next step of your life, which is actually the college, uh, you know, thing. Because universities or college uh, you know, learning is not easy. It's not like a high school. It's like college where you're doing your own self-learning. So that's where uh, things uh, change. So again, getting a uh, uh, getting expert help is good, but don't make experts write things for you. I mean, this is where I would certainly say, don't, don't, don't do that. Because, uh, you know, again, if I write an essay for, let's say, Alina here, I don't know Alina as a person. So obviously, my essay is not about Alina. My essay is all about, okay, you know, the things that is needed in the college. So maybe it's very good words that are coming out from me as an expert, but it doesn't say anything about Alina. And obviously, it's not going to fit in the bill. Then they know exactly the admissions officers there would definitely catch it and say, this is not an essay written by a student. This is an essay written by an expert. So obviously, we are not even considering the student because they know that you went to an expert and you gave him or her money and then they wrote the essay for you. No, that should not happen. And that's why I think we, uh, I would say this prep for university that Dr. Charis has started, um, I guess this is very different uh, because we are not writing essays for you, but we are really helping you come up with those themes. So I know uh, during the past week, uh, Ahmed reached out to us. And he wanted to have, he wrote his complete essay and then he wanted to have us look at the essay again. And we gave him our viewpoints, but nothing changed. I mean, his concept, his wordings, everything, his verbiage remained the same. 
it was just that we were telling him, okay, maybe, you know, you can add or delete this particular thing or add a little bit more about what happened in this particular instance, right? So again, the, the thoughts were actually the students, not the professors or not the experts. And that's what the admissions committee is looking at. Yeah. I don't know if Ta Varis, oh, sorry, uh, Dr. Jaris, if that answered your question or not. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a very, very good explanation. If I may also ask you again to clarify the reasons or purpose uh, for the school specific essay. So many of them um, ask, uh, why do you select our school? And again, so Maxim asked me a few times, what do I put there? And um, I had a feeling that again, that this is a, um, how should I put, put it? I don't wanna say it's a BS question, but um, uh, you know, if, if I had to honestly answer it, uh, I would have a difficult time finding words because for example, let's say, you know, I don't know, let's take for example, NC State University. So it's a solid university, not an elite one. And so why do you apply there? Well, I don't know, I apply everywhere. I have a few backup schools, I have a few rich schools. Uh, I selected schools that have a good, you know, uh, I don't know, whatever maxims go in chemistry there, technical, you know, engineering schools. But uh, to say why this particular one, I mean, why I'm applying to, you know, just like when I was applying for jobs myself and some universities uh, for being a professor, they ask why, why us? Well, I'm applying everywhere where it's open and then I wanna see who's gonna give me the offer and then I will be selected. So it almost seems again, you need to come up with some sort of, I had a feeling that you need to come up with some sort of a overstated reason for why you apply and where you apply. Like for example, why are you applying to Harvard? Well, it's a great school. Everybody you know, want, wants to go there. Why are you applying to Duke? Well, it's another great school and I'm applying to all great schools in my you know, reasonable distance. So, I mean, obviously it can be spiced up a little bit with, you know, as I said, look at the specifics of the program and then say, I, I genuinely like this aspect. Uh, maybe look at the re research of the specific faculty and say, well, I want to do X, Y, Z, and you have these professors that do X, Y, Z. But again, uh, it almost feels like the students are prompted to say why this and this only school interests you. Whereas in reality, it's never this only school. In reality, there are always a bunch of schools that would be absolutely great. Another bunch of schools that would be very good too. And so it's a little bit, I mean, it almost feels like a dilemma where you have to overstate your actual reasons and interests, whereas you're interested in multiple schools. So I'm curious, what's your philosophy in this respect? So do you want to be open and say, look, I'm applying to 10 different schools and yours wants of the best and I'm applying to your school? Or do you have to pretend that this particular school is my absolute goal? And if you accept me, that's, you know, especially it's tricky when you're applying to your safety schools. Again, you know, do you honestly say, well, look guys, you're my backup school, but you're good enough. So if I don't get anywhere else, I would be happy to go to you. Or do you still try to pretend that it's your actual goal? Like, how do you approach it? How do you balance that, I don't know, sort of more pragmatic and, uh, you know, uh, boring reality versus the need to be, to sound excited and exclusive uh, in your choice of school? Yes, yeah, so uh, my take on this, uh, the admission officers, they know that, uh, you know, students are applying to multiple schools. It's, 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 an, it's an open secret, right? I want to have options. I'll apply to read yeah. schools, get schools everywhere, right? So I don't really have to explicitly state that in my essay that, hey, you know, I am applying to seven schools. Everyone knows it, right? I'm not going to put all my eggs in just one basket and say, no, this is the only university I'm applying to and you are my only chance, right? So uh, I think that's why every essay has to be tailor-made to specific universities. Mm -hmm. Not have a one essay and then say that this is the one I'm just going to blindly just put in all the, all the applications, right? Um, my suggestion would be that uh, look at, website is a great uh, resource. Look at their program, look at their faculty, look at things like what is the class size over there? Yeah. Maybe you know, like small class sizes, you, you want personalized interactions. Sometimes on the websites of these universities, you have the student perspective too. What made them choose that university? Look at that carefully. You need to spend time on the website yep. for sure. Because the only source of information that you have, apart from maybe some friends who are attending that university, is the website. And the website is always current. They keep uh, their, The universities keep their uh, websites updated. Look at their mission. Look at their vision look at the particular school's mission and vision, look at the program website, look at the faculty, what type of research they are doing, 
and then you can come up with your own ideas that you know uh, i i look i have i've looked at uh, the the program and i've looked at the faculty research this is the area that really you know i have intersections of my research interest with uh, with a particular faculty or with a particular program and this is what i can bring to the university right mm -hmm. it's always you know you're looking for a university for a brand name so university is going to provide something to you but what can you do for the university uh, which will help you professionally which will help the university also have a better name right so make sure that you are not just having one common essay and then just copying pasting it and putting it in a different applications right make sure you tailor it of course some portions yes you can duplicate it right but then make sure that you are uh, you know uh, having a unique essay for each of the for each yeah. of the essays, right and you don't have to explicitly state that you know i'm applying for you know, six universities this one is probably looking at my gta this is like out of my reach but i'm still applying for it I mean, people know it and let them decide that whether your GPA is good enough or not, right? There have been instances where there has been a lower GPA, a lower SAT score, but the person got into a very good university, which was like the uh, out of uh, mind for that uh, particular candidate. So let them decide. Don't ever um, underestimate yourself in your essays, right? Bring out the best in yourself and bring out what you can do to the university. What do you bring to the university? What do you bring on the table, your skill set that will help the program, that will help the college, that will help the university uh, uh, in, in, the, in the long run, right? So that will help you professionally and uh, you can do something good for the university. So keep that in mind. So just, just to really elaborate, um, I would just elaborate on what Amit just said, you know, so uh, he's talking about uh, your skill set. Now, basically, that means your learning in that particular subject. Now, again, I understand some of you may be undecided, which is also fine. But those of you who are not undecided, those of you who know exactly what careers do you want to pursue in your college, then you should relate that uh, to your, um, you know, to your application. So, for example, let's say if you're applying for Duke. And if you're not applying for the liberal arts college at Duke, but you're applying for engineering school, then you have to be very, very specific because Duke's College of Engineering is very prestigious in terms of getting into that, even within Duke University is a big deal. So if you're looking for the engineering school at Duke, then you have to make sure that, let's say if you're applying for computer science, engineering or whatever, so then you have to talk about your experiences or your subjects or your courses that you have taken in computer science. Maybe you've done a research in computer science and then relate that particular thing so that's the reason you want to apply to that particular university, to that particular department, to that particular college, uh, because you feel that, you know, uh, that college, again, not you feel, but you have actually research on the website and the college is providing a huge amount of stuff on, let's say, biomedical engineering, right? Um, and the biomedical engineering is the college or the, the, the university is known for that particular area. And you having done some research in biomedical engineering, done some research on, let's say, prosthetics, uh, or done something or, or you know have taken some courses uh, into that area that makes it more relevant it's, that, it's that telling the university that you are a strong fit candidate for that university so that's what the point you have to make and i understand right now i, I could see four students here there's alina fernando maxim and sophia and i'm thinking that all four of you at least know this particular thing that uh, you, you have a common app essay, right? The common app essay remains the same. I mean, that's the essay that doesn't have to change. And it's not until, uh, you know, over time, yes. if you feel that, you know, okay, if you're applying for a regular application process versus the early, and you have figured out a little more things, then you can change the common as, uh, app essay in your, uh, in your regular application that happens in January, right? But for now, if you've done the, the common app essay, that remains constant. Your college specific essays are different from the common app essay. So I just want to make sure that you guys understand that you're not changing anything in common app, but you're changing uh, what is needed for each and every college application. So some colleges will make you write one or two or three essays. I know Princeton uh, was extraordinary because they made um, Ariman write like five essays when Ariman was applying for Princeton. So each and every university has their own demands, right? So that's where that in the, the, the university focus is important. That's where the mission, the vision, the values of the university. Maybe university has a program, again, let me bring back biomedical engineering, because that's, I think, uh, at Johns Hopkins, that is the program, right? That's the program that students apply for when they're looking for Johns Hopkins in a big way. 
So again, you know, you can write those things when you're writing your application. Obviously, I'll agree with uh, Amit when he said that you don't have to write that. No, I am absolutely in love with this particular university because there's no university I'm applying to. Uh, that's the wrong statement because you're not applying to only one university, but you can definitely say that I'm applying for an early decision uh, only for this university because I'm very keen on getting into this university. And that is a fact. That's the truth because the reason they have the early decision is because they know that this is your preferred university of choice, right? So that, that's where you can make that statement. But don't make that statement as a blanket statement for all the universities that you apply for in your future. Right. So just be careful about the words that you use. Again, my recommendation is if you have done essays, we are here to help. Right. So we can always have a look at your essays, give you, uh, you know, give you uh, more advice on what you can write or what not to write. And that will be helpful for your thing. But again, I need to, you know, for me right now to understand the way uh, the advice that, or the help that you need, we need to know what universities you're applying for. What is our deadline for them? Uh, so keep us involved. I, I mean, I was very happy when I saw Hamid's essay because the, I know that he's keeping us involved. And he says that he's applying for this particular university and this is his first choice. So that's what maybe I'm asking you. If you have written your essays and you're struggling with them, we are here to help. But we need to know which is your university, why that university, have you done a research in a particular topic and that particular area is number one in that university. So give us reasons to work with and send us whatever you have done for your essays, and then we can help you with that. Yep, that makes perfect sense. So in terms of then explaining why a particular school is the choice, uh, so um, uh, you admit listed a few in very interesting points that students may take, uh, you know, may mention in their essay. So you said university size, class sizes, maybe they want a bigger, smaller, uh, specific programs, specific majors, maybe geographic location, maybe something related to specific research done by the faculty. So any other things that may be considered when, when sort of explaining the re reason for a particular school? There's one other thing which the universities really like and that's your legacy. So if you have a oh, legacy, legacy, and I, I, I understand that a lot of our students are international, so they may not have that legacy, which is fine. But if you have a legacy, even if your uncle went to a university and, you know, so that really also helps. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, but again, having said that, you know, a lot of schools are now cutting on legacies. So they're not even considering you just because your parents went there. Yeah. So again, it all depends, right? Uh, one other thing which uh, just came to me is uh, when you are talking, writing your essay, you can even talk about the person who inspired you. So this could be uh, your family member, your parents. It could be it could be grandparents. It could be a professor at school. It could be someone who really helped you pick up this area. Again, I related to biomedical engineering because I know it's a hot uh, it's a hot topic right now. So uh, if you have done a research in a biomedical and there was uh, uh, the researcher that really helped you, uh, then talk about that particular researcher. That really helps your application because remember again that's an experience that's only specific to you. No one else had that experience and no one else can know about that experience but you. Yeah. So that's yeah. where, you know, all those things will be helpful when you're writing your application or your essay. Yeah, maybe even look up, um, it just occurred to me, maybe even look up uh, who were the prominent researchers from this university, maybe Nobel Prize winners, maybe current, you know, stars. And so I will not be surprised that some of, the, of, of them actually could inspire you and maybe you do want to work with them. So if so, you may not even know that until you do the research, but once you see who's working, like you mentioned schools like Princeton or for example, John Hopkins, I mean, Princeton obviously had a bunch of <clears throat> people from, you know, like including what is it, the, uh, John Nash, for example, wasn't he at, at Princeton at some time? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. um, Princeton has a lot of um, noble um, ideas. Einstein, right. Einstein right. Yeah. taught at Princeton, if I remember correctly, right? Mm -hmm. So John Hopkins obviously is a leader in, for example, health sciences. So if you wanted to do that. So it seems like there would be very good reasons or very good things to say about these schools that are, you know, genuinely, you know, genuine. So I can, I can see how people might want to go to some of these universities, but it could be also something maybe local, maybe perhaps not as, you know, not in the Ivy League status, but still have something there that would inspire you, people that you might want to work with. So I assume that's what you want to mention. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Very interesting. Very interesting. And, uh, so maybe I can say at so. this point, yeah, go ahead and show. No, I was just saying that it's time that we can see uh, show the application that uh, Adam and wrote, just so that they get an yes. idea. Everyone gets an idea. But yeah, yeah go ahead, Amit. Yeah, and at this time, I would just like to say, you know, the most important thing that is right now in your hands, in your control, is your essay. 
all your scores, your GPA, your uh, SAT and all those scores, uh, your recommendation letters, I think probably you've already taken care of all that. All the recommendation letters, probably you, you're already uh, processing that, uh, getting in touch with your teachers and making sure that sending them the links and reminding them about that. The other stuff that you have done so far in the last one year in your high school, that is now, it's past, right? You can't do anything about it, but you have full control over your essay right now. So make sure that you bring out your A game, bring out your best in writing that essay, because that can make a difference. And again, I cannot stress the fact that your essay is going to be read. Don't think that no one is going to read your essay. They'll just, you know, send it to some computer algorithm and they'll look at uh, your, your grammar and they look at your scores and then you know everything is taken care of by some algorithm. It's not going to happen that way. There will be humans looking at your applications, right? So uh, just make sure that uh, you know you bring out your A game while you're writing your essays. That's, that can make a difference, a lot of difference. Right? I'm curious if, they, if any university actually does a study and looks, you know, like goes back a few years later and looks at the correlation between, for example, essay themes or topics or length and uh, both GPA during the studies, but also maybe, I don't know, starting salary after the studies or success. I wonder if there is such, you know, a relationship and if so, what seems to be predictive of a future success? And uh, I don't think the universities would divulge that information, but it would be interesting to know. Well, you know what, if, uh, if you get admitted in a university, you can always ask the, uh, the office, the admissions office, have a look at your application and what right did you did, what, 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 what went right in your application. There's this, uh, in, at least in the US, you have this FERPA. So you have a right to know why were you admitted in that, in that university. There will be remarks on an application. What did they find positive about you in, in this application? So you can always do that. And I think what even you can also ask if what didn't go well with your application. So when you got into, let's say, and I think I've seen it, it was uh, students doing that. So they're applying for all the Ivy Leagues. And if two of the Ivy Leagues have selected them and the remaining haven't, then they have reached out back to those Ivy Leagues saying that, hey, I got selected at MIT and Harvard, but why has Princeton or Columbia not selected me? And they will, uh, those universities are, are bound. They have to get back to you. Yeah, yeah, they are legally bound to respond back to you, specific to your application and telling you why you were not selected. Remember the, all the lawsuits that have happened? Yep, uh, yep. Where they have challenged the ethical identities and saying that Asian Americans are not getting it. Or, you know, uh, I think uh, in the recent uh, University of North Carolina lawsuit, there was uh, whites uh, that actually complained and said that they, the application system is working against them. So the, the university is legally bound to then tell you whether it's your ethical background that didn't work or whether it was an essay that didn't work or what was it that was wrong with your application. So you are, I mean, you're liable to an answer. So yes. But right now, your, your priority should be just coming up with a good essay and making sure that you get into the school of your choice, right? So all these things can come later once you get in. Then <laughs> Yeah, I'm not asking them to legally challenge any yeah. university. No, I think our yeah. main thing is to get to you in your university of choice. So remember, we talked about safety, target, and reach. We want you to get into reach, not just safety or target. So that will be our success if you get successful in getting in a reach university. So uh, I have to take an exit right now, but I think Dr. Amit Arora will be sharing his app, uh, the college app. So thank you, guys. And feel free to reach out to us. Yeah, thank you. Bye. All right. So let me just share uh, my screen. Um, I think I don't have the... Uh, yeah, it should be working now. Okay. Yep. Very interesting. And I really believe that, again, if students, if you missed that point, so what Professor Aurora said, that at this time, the only thing that is still under your control is basically your essay. It's too late to change your GPA. It's too late, uh, almost too late to add anything to your resume. Uh, I mean, you should have done it in the last few months or years. But one thing that can still be done well or not well is your essay. And it's an important component. And so please do take that seriously. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. I agree with you, Vas. Um, so this is uh, one of the prompts uh, for the Common App um, for, uh, for Ariman. Uh, and I think he Ariman had uh, come to this forum probably a few weeks ago. And he said that uh, he was uh, gracious enough to share his essay also. So I'm just going to read out the prompt first, and then I'll go, go to his response. So the prompt was, describe a topic, an idea, or a concept you find so engaging 
that it makes you lose all track of time. Why does it captivate you? What or who do you turn to when you want to learn? So when I just looked at this, my first reaction was, you know, I have to read the entire uh, three sentences that are there. I'll have to read the entire three sentences to really understand what do they want? Because if I just read it partially, the very first one, describe a topic, idea or concept you find so engaging, engaging that it makes you lose track of time, right? So the first thing that may come to my mind is, oh, I start playing video games and then I'm out of mind. So I, I lose track of time, right? But if you look at the third one, yeah. what or who do you turn to when you want to learn more? So the key word here is learning, right? So you're talking about learning, you're not talking about anything else. So till you read the entire thing, you'll have a very vague, very broad idea of what the response should be, right? So uh, what captivates you? And again, everything points to the learning, right? So something, so your, your response should be something to do with your learning skills and your learning attitude. Right. So you'll have to write a story, but the central piece is all going to be about learn. Right. So that's what the admissions officer is looking for. Uh, what's your learning attitude? Whether you're going to be a right fit for this university, what can you bring to the table? Right. And what are your learning skills? Right. So uh, let me share with you uh, what Arman wrote. Right. So that, there's, uh, that's his response. And he took. Uh, few days probably, and then he kept on version five, version seven, version 10, version 20, right? So there were lots of iterations and he finally got this right. And he said, okay, this is the one that I'm going to submit. So I'm just going to try to read it out and take like two, three minutes. Uh, so uh, that's what he wrote. For two hours every week, I sit with absolute focus in front of my screen, the silence that uh, pervades the room, occasionally interrupted by the furious clatter of fingers on my keyboard. My eyes are affixed to the computer, occasionally darting to the paper by my side, ready to attack the next problem. In those two hours, I enter a world unconstrained by the limits of flesh and blood, a world of mechanical abstract algorithms. In two hours, I'm pushed to my cognitive and creative limits, whether I'm debugging the minutia of a single line of code, minutes away from a complete solution, or learning about a new algorithm to tackle the problem looming above me. For two hours every week, I'm a computer scientist. So that's the first paragraph. So here, Araman is trying to bring out what is his passion. So he's spending two hours uh, every week. It's just two hours a week, right? But then he is totally immersed in it and he loses track of time. And then he ends the paragraph by saying that for every two, uh, two hours every week, I'm a computer scientist. So by the end of the first paragraph, as an admission officer, the reader gets to know what this person really is looking yeah. for. He's very focused looking at being a computer scientist, right? Goes on to say that computer science was not my first passion. My interest transformed every season and that happens with every one of us, right? When we are in the elementary school, most kids, they want to be maybe a magician, maybe a paleontologist, they love dinosaurs. So, but over time, everything changes. So, you know, it's just another, another one more story like that. So computer science was not my first passion. My interest transformed every season. One fall, I had fell in love with string theory. After Christmas, I found I had an obsession with cartography. And as the trees blossomed, so he's talking about all the seasons changing, right? Uh, trees blossomed. I <coughs> tucked my hand-drawn map of 16th century South Asia into a drawer and instead took to learning discrete math. Among the vast array of fields, I could not content myself with just one. So there's all that confusion going on, right? And then he tries to bring in his cultural thing. My Indian heritage drew me to engineering, but my American upbringing taught me the values of humanities. Rather than balance, these forces only brought tension. Yet a sudden change in circumstances created an equilibrium. Right? So he's talking about, you know, his mind wavering, you know, every five months, six months, he's changing what he wants to be. And then he's also adding in the cultural thing. There's instead of having some balance, so there's some tension between his cultural values, right? But then he says that he found an equilibrium. Every Bollywood movie has an intermission. The intermission is partially motivated by necessity. 
three hours, the standard runtime of an Indian movie is an awfully long time to captivate an audience. A pause is refreshing. Nevertheless, it also serves a creative purpose, always occurring at the crossroads of the story where our protagonist faces a difficult choice or is stuck with epiphany. If my life thus far was a Bollywood film, my sophomore year sojourning the rural Wyoming Valley in Northeast Pennsylvania, a stop on my migration from the small coastal city of Savannah, Georgia to cosmopolitan Washington DC would be the intermission. So look at those uh, things, you know, he's trying to uh, uh, relate his life story with the seasons, with a Bollywood uh, movie, right? And then connecting everything how all that fits in into computer science. Right? So that was when I discovered computer science. I joined coding club at my school, Wyoming Seminary in Pennsylvania. It was a sudden change for me, leaving behind the home I had known for nearly a decade, yet bringing great opportunities. So he lived in Savannah, Georgia, a small city for about nine years. So he's talking about that. My friends introduced me to competitive programming, a strange combination of puzzles and sports that focused on applying known algorithms and data structures to real world problems. For the first time in my life, there was a community of people interested in computer science that I could access. The kinds of problems that these two hour contests offered were a small digestible dose of vast complex problems that modern computer science tackles. When I was uprooted from my home once more a year later, I found even more opportunities in the busting metropolis of Washington, DC. I applied my computer science knowledge to natural language processing, which is the use of computers to analyze, generate, and study human languages. I reached out to Dr. Nathan Schneider in the linguistics department at Georgetown University, hoping to do research in this field. Soon enough, he interviewed and accepted me as his intern. And I started researching on improving text to speech accuracy for Hindi an Indian language that I'm fluent in. So he's talking about text-to-speech, all your Siri and all those devices, right? All text-to-speech stuff. I continue learning the intricacies of machine learning under his guidance. He is my mentor even now, directing me towards computational linguistics programs and pushing me to new heights. My research team at Georgetown University, my advisor and the PhD students whom I work with have been invaluable resources on, on this quest. Computer science has given me more than just a passion. It has been a pilgrimage of self-discovery, one with many setbacks and as many opportunities. Not only does it make me lose track of time, but it also gives meaning to the time that awaits me as I look to the future. So that's his essay. So he's here- Very, very good. All, he's bringing in all his learning skills and he's eager to learn. And he's talked about his journey. He didn't, he was not born as a computer scientist or something, but, and he was uh, having these different thoughts. And finally he settled into it, into one particular area of interest, which really excited him. And that was all by chance, right? So he moved from one school to another school. He found these group of friends. He found a coding club and then he just got into coding, right? And then he moves on to say that, you know, he was so interested, he wanted to learn more. So he reached out to some professors at Georgetown University and he was accepted as an intern. And he, as a high school student, he started working with a group of researchers consisting of professors, PhD students. And that's how, you know, he was looking more and more, uh, le learning out more. Yeah. So, uh, so, so that's, that's a story, right? Yeah. yeah, that's a very, very good example. So uh, smooth, coherent. And how many iterations did you say he had to go through? Probably 20, 25 iterations. I mean, he, uh, but the basic idea was his, right? So uh, we as parents helped him that, you know, maybe you should change this a little bit. Maybe you need to expand a little bit over here, maybe shift things around, talk about this. So, but it took a lot of iterations. Uh, uh, and, and finally he said, uh, yeah, this is the one that I would like to submit. Yeah. Well, don't think that you'll get it in the first shot. Maybe it's just a rough idea. As we talked about in the last uh, session that we had, maybe start off with some bullet points and then start expanding on it. And then we are here to help. We can give you some advice how to shuffle things around and maybe how to expand uh, things and maybe cut down on some stuff. But remember, the, this is your story, right? It has to be a unique story that only you know, right? Uh, don't try to get on internet. There'll be lots of essays that you can find on Google, right? Don't try to copy and paste. I mean, uh, it's, it's going to show, right? 
the admission officers, they have so much of experience. They have looked at so many essays that in one glance, they'll get to know whether this is copied or whether this is original stuff. Exactly. And, and that's your opportunity to actually signal your original stuff. So you don't want to waste uh, space on copied on somebody else's stuff. That's right. That's right. So you've got one opportunity. As I said, this is still under your control. The essay is still under your control. And you can make sure you spend time on it. Make sure you look at the website of each university that you're applying to. Yeah. Look at the programs in those universities that you're applying to. Yeah. Try to you know, get some connections between your life experience and what the university can offer and what you can offer to the university. Right? Yeah. That learning attitude, that's very, very important. That should reflect in your, in your essay. That you are an eager learner, you're willing to learn, and you can go you know, beyond the call of duty to, to do uh, what, what you've set out to do and to get into that particular school, right? Yeah. Um, um, I have a, a few technical uh, questions that were emailed to me over the week, but students, so just to close the topic of um, uh, essay, so if you have any questions, now is a good time to ask, and we are almost out of time. So uh, a couple of questions that I got, there was one um, from a student who was applying um, uh, when selecting the majors or concentrations. So sometimes there would be a very long list. And so for some schools, it would be like, for example, you know, uh, math, physics, chemistry, you know, arts, whatever. But then there would be like, for example, first year chemistry or first year engineering. So what are those, why, why does it say first year? So how exactly does it work? And I didn't know either. Is it one of those where you sort of take like pre-med type of deal or, or, or what exactly, like how is chemistry different from first year chemistry? Uh, do you know what those uh, might be? Yeah, that's a, a very typical question. Which university is this? Oh, I don't remember. There was an email, there was even a screenshot. So uh, I don't know, Maxim, maybe you saw something like that. I don't know, can, can you remember right away? Uh, so I don't know, is he here? Because generally, if you're looking for uh, like the programs, I mean, they'll just say a biology major. Yeah, yeah just, just the general thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it should not be like a first year chemistry. If uh, I can get the context behind it, maybe I can answer that question. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I misunderstood the question too, but there was something with the screenshot. I need to probably go to my emails and find it. But Maxim, do you remember seeing anything like that, like first year engineering or whatever that might be for your in your case? I think your microphone is not working. Hello, hello? Oh yeah, hello? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. I, no, I don't remember specifically. Like, I think they have like undergraduate chemistry, but yeah, that, that is- Maybe what, you yeah. that, That's yeah. fine. So yeah, so if it comes up again, so maybe the student can explain it more um, uh, in detail. So another thing also uh, in terms of the SAT scores, there were several questions about how, how much is enough. So uh, I looked at the distribution of the scores uh, for, the, for this year. So it seems like about 1350, that's about top 5%. And then more like 1500, that's about one top 1%. 1 and then uh, I assume it would be, I don't remember exactly, but it would be like probably like 1250, it would be probably top 10% or something like that. So how much is enough? I know that Aryaman had basically almost perfect, right? So he had like 1600 or something like that. Yeah, he had, I think 1580. So yeah. it was, so, but that's that's basically the, the theoretical maximum almost, right? Yeah, yeah. Like so, so those who have let's say thirteen fifty or thirteen eighty, so which is roughly top five percent, do they have a chance? I mean, like if there are can, candidates like like Ariaman who have like literally perfect score. I mean, I cannot imagine, uh, you know, like it's it's theoretically impossible to do much better. So, yeah. how much is so, enough then? <clears throat> so uh, 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 one advice would be look at the website of the university, mm -hmm. they have statistics over the last two years, you know, what was the SAT score of the students who got admitted, right? So you'll get a pretty good idea about what scores they are looking at, right? But remember, they are just the average scores that they give. Uh, they could be outliers. There are many cases where the SAT score was lower than their range, but the, still that person got in because of maybe the background, maybe because of a unique circumstance, maybe some great skill set, set, uh, skill set that person had. So look at uh, everything, but then definitely the website of the university will have all the information about what the, the, um, the incoming freshman class of the last year and maybe the past last two years, what has been the SAT scores for that. So you'll get a good idea that, okay, this is the, I've got 1350 
and maybe the range is between 13 to 1400. So I fit in pretty well. So I have a good chance. So I just need to polish up my, all my other material and make sure that, you know, I get into that university. And again, don't get disheartened if the incoming freshman uh, SAT score was higher than your score. Uh, uh, I mean, if it's, if, if the range is like too high, you're totally out of reach. Uh, but never get disheartened because you're not the one who's deciding, right? Let the admissions officer decide whether you are good enough or you're bad enough, right? Don't judge yourself that, hey, I'm bad enough. I'm bad for this university or I'm just too good for this university, right? So have a look at the statistics, have a look at the facts that are there on the website and then make your own judgment and bring in your A game for sure. Yeah, yeah. And it seems to me that SAT matters, but it's not the answer to everything, right? So like, it's I know Aryaman got into some elite universities like Georgetown, obviously, but I think uh, if I remember correctly, he was admitted to schools like Duke. So, and I'm, for example, mm -hmm. looking at Duke here. Uh, so they have the average score 770 and 800. So they basically want perfect scores. So, and he got yeah. in, but then at the same time, some other elite schools, despite his nearly perfect score, and I assume his GPA was probably for, I, I worked with him, those who don't know, I mean, the guy is a genius. I mean, he is like, literally, you can see that right away. And so yet for some schools, uh, for some reason, that was not enough. So it seems like simply the numbers, uh, that's not everything. I have no idea what else they were looking for. I mean, like, uh, you know, who, who else is applying there if, like, is it really that they had thousands more applicants who are better than Iron Man? Like, if that's the case, where did they find them? I mean, do, do those people even exist? So, but it seems like, you know, the number itself is helpful, but not a guaranteed uh, sort of key to the door, to the lock. That's right. Right. So it's, it's not just the SAT score, right? You, you, in your application material, you've got so much of information. You've got your SAT scores, you've got your GPA. You've got how many AP uh, courses that you took. And remember, you know, if you are, if you're taking more AP courses, then you can always boost up your, your GPA because that's counted on a scale of five. So the more number of AP course, uh, courses you've taken in your high school, your GPA will have a better number, right? So it's your GPA, it's your uh, number of uh, AP courses that you've taken, whether you've been successful in those AP courses, your letter of recommendation from your teachers, some could be very generic, some could be really specific, particular to that student, right? So some teachers will write just a generic one, which means like they write it for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but if, uh, if the teacher really likes you or you have a good relationship with the teacher, that teacher is going to give you a good recommendation letter, mm -hmm. right? So there are so many factors. That's why they call it the holistic thing. So don't just bank upon, you know, I got a 1400 score, so I am going to get into many universities, not a guarantee. Or, you know, my score is 1,200. I'm not going to get into any good university. That's not the be all and end all of everything. There is uh, like seven or eight different factors that go into deciding uh, what's going to uh, uh, get you in. And remember, these qualitative measures, the subjective stuff, like, like your recommendation letters, they matter. Your essay, that's going to matter, right? The objective stuff, it's easy, right? You can just compare, you know, you, you are the top 5%, you are in the middle 50%, you are in the bottom 50%. But the subjective stuff, that can really make a difference. So uh, make sure you're you are just putting in everything, uh, giving your A game to everything that you're doing. Right? Well, very, very informative. We are out of time. So we want to be respectful of the time of our professors here. So any questions, uh, last minute stuff? All right, well, we'll see. In Free to weeks. reach out to Dr. Dr. Vastaris and... Uh, to all of us and we are here to help for sure. Yeah. And so by next two weeks, we probably want to hear from you that you already started applying to schools and we definitely want to see if you want us to look at them. Uh, but the essays, you really cannot put it off any longer. So uh, you want to have something already and spend the next few weeks uh, polishing them. So we're getting very close to the application deadlines. All right, well, thank you so much. Truly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you. Yeah, see you. good luck. Good luck to everyone. Bye-bye.